stand on the pulpit to bring a word from heaven for each and every one of y'all. We thank God that they, wherever they're at, they're having a safe and blessed time and stuff and covered up under the blood. And I just thank God for all the visitors, for each and every one's faith that's present here today under the sound of my voice. I hope that what the Lord has given me, it's truly a word for each and every one of y'all. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask each and every one of you to pray my strength as I bring the word from heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father God, we just thank you, God, for the word that's going to come forth today. I thank God as I humble myself, God, right now unto you, God, that you will give me a rich realm of word from heaven, God. It will flow with wisdom, knowledge, and the people will get the revelation out of it in the name of Jesus, that they might take this word and go out into the highways and the byways and to minister to the saved and the unsaved, God. God, give them holy boldness as they come upon each and every unsaved or saved person to minister to throughout this week and for the rest of their lives. So God, will forever give you all the praise and all the glory and let everybody say amen and amen and hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, first of all, we're just going to loosen up to this song and just enjoy the word, okay? I'm excited. I'm excited. I hope y'all are excited, too. I really am excited about it. You know, the word. Anytime I come upon the pulpit, you know, I'm just excited. I really am excited. So if I talk kind of fast, I'm, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to slow me down, okay? <laughs> because I do get excited. Um, I love each and every one of you. I really, really do. I love you. I love you. I love you. And God loves you too. He loves you tremendously. He wants you to be everything that you were created to be. Um, you know, my first initial sermon I did was finding your purpose. Finding your purpose. And you know, when God gives you a word, it's for you first before it's for the people. So, you know, that's, some, that's something that's really important to each individual as their walk is with God, is finding your purpose, you know, not allowing somebody to speak into you and tell you what your purpose is, but your heart will lead you what your purpose is. So those are some key things, you know, just find your purpose. You know, why, are, why am I here on earth? Why am I here? You know, people think, you know, because... You got to be on, it's called call, you got to be on the pool pit and stuff. But that's not necessary. All of us are ministers, you know, in Christ. So find your purpose. Whatever you do, and if you do it in love, it's amazing. God will honor that. You know, he'll, he'll bless you tremendously for doing that, down from the baby to the elders. So find your, find your niche, your purpose that God created you be here, you know, because it's all one big puzzle. You know how you pull out a puzzle, and when you dump it out, the box is all over the places. But when you all put it together, it's so beautiful. So, you know, that's just a word of encouragement that each and every one of you, you have a purpose here at Oak Hill. You have a purpose here on earth. You know, whether it's big or great, it doesn't matter the size. It's great in God's eyes, okay? So I just thank God for that. But um, we're going to talk about, uh, my topic today is um, the keys for ingredients. The keys for ingredients. My subtopic is what are the ingredients in your life or that you're putting in your life to complete you? That's a big question. What are you putting into your life to complete you? You know, sometimes we watch our TV shows and we get ideas from them when we should be really reading the Bible. Those are our ingredients. Those are the main keys. You know, Satan tried to come to destroy us, but Jesus went to hell to get the keys to complete us. So, you know, what are the keys? and the ingredients that we need to complete our life and what we're putting into our life. So, faith in God 
God's word and believing in him and speaking it daily, speaking it daily, all the time. And it's like baking a cake. Y'all gonna hear me talking about baking a cake a lot because I'm gonna compare the ingredients of God's word to baking a cake, okay? So I'm bringing it down to earth, all right? If you don't have all the ingredients, you don't get the results. So it's the same with everyday life in God. What you are putting in your life, what you are putting into your life, what you're putting into your cake is the results you're going to get. This is a question. Are you rising to the highest potential that God wants for you and your life and others? Selah. You know, if that cake don't rise up, you're missing something. You know, if you walking around with a sad face, or you don't want to speak, or you just mumble and grumbling all the, all the time, are you really rising to your highest potentials that God wants you to be? You know, when I think about that, you know, Jesus... He died for us. He was beaten. He was stricken from everything. But he never complained. And if Jesus loved us that much to be quiet, and even in the midst of his quietness, he was thanking and praising his father for sacrificing him for us, just for us. So are you rising to your highest potentials that God has given you? That's a question. So let's go to Genesis 1 and 28. It just seems like this is the foundation scripture for Oak Hill. This is really the foundation for the people of God. Genesis 1 and 28. We already know that we was made in the image of God. So that's greatness by itself. But then we're going to talk about the key ingredients that God wants us to do as individuals. Now, we can't pick from now one of these four ingredients. We got to use all of them, okay? Because it ain't no substitutes. So Genesis 1 and 28, it says, And God blessed them and said unto O kill cathedral of glory, O kill cathedral of glory, and all the people of God from the sound of my voice, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over all the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon this earth. That's a powerful word. And in that is ingredients that we need to help us to rise to our potential. Dominion. Pastor talks about dominion all the time. Last Sunday, the last couple of Sundays, he's been all, Wednesday's been all in, all in this sermon. But I said, God, I know this is the right one. This is the right now word for us. Dominion is one of the ingredients. Dominion is power. It's authority. It's I'm in control. I got to take charge of things. When you walk into a room, Pastor talks about this all the time. When you walk into a room, you take control. You should know who you are. It's just like putting on your Sunday best. When you walk into that room, you know, sometimes people, when they're putting on their best best, they want to be a little bit late because, you know, they got that sharp outfit on. They want everybody to see it. You know, I got sharp outfit. But don't walk up and ask somebody else got your outfit on. Oh, you just, just, you just messed up. I didn't have that happen to me before. And I'd be like, God, I got to get back on the right track. 
But you, when you walk into a room, you got to know that you have dominion, power, authority, and you in charge. Now, you got to be careful with that dominion, too, now, okay? You got to do it in love. Now, let's not walk in pride. Let's not get a little ignorant, okay? You still better know who you is. You ain't higher than God, okay? All right, you got to remember that. Don't have that ego. You know, nobody can't tell me nothing. I'm the stuff. No, 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 no. You still got to be humble in the midst of your having the dominion and power, okay? So that's one of the ingredients. Know who you are. Know your, I, the millennium um, children or no one that say is know your worth. So know your worth. Know who you are. Know who you are. You have the power, the authority. That's what the word says, right? He gave it to each and every one of you. You've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? So you have dominion. The next one is being fruitful. Fruitful. To live your life that is producing good works and the key reflects to the character that's of God. So you got to have the character of God to be fruitful. You know, when you think about fruitful, the first thing they think about is producing more babies and stuff. I mean, you know, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But being fruitful, being fruitful to me is what God tells me and what I read. I minister to others. I speak it out. You're going to see it in my life. I'm not boasting or nothing, but I can truly say God, I was born with the gift of love because I love everybody. I don't care what you do to me, I'm going to love you. That's the gift of God. Some people have to pray, God, teach me how to love them. I don't have to do that. And I thank God for that. You know, because people ruffle your feathers, but still love them. If you truly, truly love God, that's a part of one of the fr being fruitful, love. So you got the dominion and you got to be fruitful. Multiply. Reproduce. Increase. You have to ask yourself the question, what are you reproducing on your daily walk with God? What are you reproducing at your home? When you at your home, your house all by yourself, what are you reproducing? I know that you might be there by yourself, but God is omnipotent. He knows everything and he's everywhere. So what's done in the dark going to come to the light? So what you doing at home? It's going to show up here. It's going to show up on your job. So produce some good stuff, some things that God has designed in each and every one of us. Replenish. That's a powerful word, replenish. Fill the earth. Fill the earth. I know we sometimes people say, fill the earth, God, with your glory. We are God's glory. So we got to act like it's glory. We got to act like it's glory. So those are some ingredients, the key ingredients that God wants each and every one of us to do. Now let us talk about baking a cake. We got all kinds of cakes. We done start baking it, y'all. We mix, we're going to mix it up, okay? <laughs> so let's help you understand the nat from the natural realm is baking a cake. From the spiritual realm was dominion, fruitful, multiply, and repent, replenish. So now we're going to talk about baking a cake. When you're baking a cake, you need all the ingredients. I know Duncan Hines in Pillsbury and already got all the ingredients in the book, but we're going to bake a cake from scratch, okay? All right? We're going to bake it from scratch. And all the ingredients you need, you will get all the right outcomes if you use all the right ingredients. There are different types of cakes that you can bake, but we're going to talk about a basic one. You need flour. There's all different types of brands of flour. Some call for milk. Some call for water. You need the oil. Some of them call for butter. 
Some of them calls for salt butter. Some of them calls for unsalted butter. You need eggs. Some you can use egg whites. Some you can use the whole egg. Sugar, flavor, and sometimes it calls for baking soda. And after that, you need an oven. Y'all remember that word oven, okay? All right. When you're comparing it to God's key ingredients, dominion and power, for just example and teachers for teaching purpose, flour, milk, water, fruitful, flavor, sugar, multiply, egg, oil, butter, replenish, oven. When you mix all these ingredients together, you get the kingdom living. And you can get you a perfect cake. Okay? It's a process. God's word, faith, love, teachable, being humble, and trust. You know, sometimes pastor speaks that this is the season for me and for you to overtake by the blessings to get ready. So get ready, y'all. Yeah. Get ready, get ready. We're going to mix it up, okay? Now, there's one more important thing that we need to know. There are no substitutes to this process, period. There's no substitutes. No substitutes. None, period. You've got to follow the instructions. You've got to follow the blueprint, which is God's word. You've got to. If you follow it exactly every time, it will always come out perfect. Not to say it ain't going to be no humps and bumps along the way, but it will come out perfect. So let's go to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs 3. Five through six. This is a very, 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 very scripture that we read a lot. Proverbs 3, five through six. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding and in all Thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So like I said, you got to follow the instructions. It ain't your ideas, it's God's ideas. Okay, it's not your thoughts, it's his thoughts. But we got to stick to those key ingredients to our lives. But then your mind might say, I think I can just Switch them ingredients some kind of way. You know how we do. I can switch them ingredients and, you know, maybe I could just switch one ingredient and then put another ingredient in it. And then it might come out the same way. No, no, no. You lean into your own understanding. You got to trust in God. He said, do it this way. You can't go that way. Wow. Mm. It's just so amazing. Or you might say, man, my light bill is due tomorrow. I'm going to figure out how to pay that light bill, but I know I got to pay this bill. But if I don't pay my light bill, it's going to get cut off tomorrow. Mm -mm. God said, come on back over here. He said, I told you to trust in me. He said in his word that I'll supply all your needs according to the riches by Christ Jesus, the glory, right? Ain't that what God said? He said he'll supply all your needs, all of them. So we got to stop trying to figure it out and lean into our own understanding. So Philippians 4 and 19, it says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we got to keep all that in mind, okay? Or when you're baking a cake, 
You can't substitute things like flour or eggs, because those are some important ingredients in baking a cake, right? And I just, I was looking at this and it says, I was just reading up a little bit and it says, when you're, when you stop the flour and the egg, they build a structure in the cake. So things can be bond together. I was like, God, you know, that's good revelation right there. The flour and the egg. So what if you substitute that? It's not going to be bonded and structured together. And that's a spiritual thing, too. I was like, wow. <laughs> Structured and bonded together. We, as Oak Hill Cathedral of Glory, we've got to get structured and bonded together. And when we do that, we have a strong foundation in the Lord. We have a, you talking about catching on fire. We have a stronger and stronger and stronger foundation. So all of those key ingredients, it's going to make us stronger and stronger and stronger than ever before. So let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 19. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that all is, and let everyone that name, nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The key word in there was foundation and seal. Now, remember I talked about that oven too, okay? Y'all keep that in mind, all right? But the solid foundation that God has laid cannot be shaken. That is God's word. That is 2 Timothy 2 and 19 to sum it up. The solid foundation that God has laid cannot be shaken. So if you mix each and every one of those ingredients in a cake, it can't be shaken, it can't fall, it's going to come out perfect if you stick with the key ingredients. You know when you was a little kid and the first thing your parents used to tell you when they was baking a cake, I know everybody know, right? Everybody know what, what, your, what your mama used to say. No running in the house. You going to do what? You going to make that cake fall. And I was like, how am I going to make the cake fall? I just always say that. How am I going to make the cake fall? What they really do be telling the truth. <laughs> but God says he has laid the solid foundation. And if you trust me, it will not be shaken. That's the word. So just trust God. Trust that your foundation is solid if you follow all the ingredients to make you rise to your highest potential that he has created you to be. So now we have mixed up all the ingredients and we are ready to put it in the oven. I think about the oven as we have followed the instructions and trust in the process. You know, sometimes... Um, some cakes call for 350, 325. But when that cake is in the oven, we got to trust the process, don't we? You know, some people got lights on the oven. You can sit there and watch it. And it just be rising. You see the little bubbles on top sometimes. And it just be rising. Whoa, that's real neat, you know. It's amazing, you know. It's amazing. Everybody's oven temperature is different too, right? So God created us all different. We can go to zero to 180, zero 35, or just stay at zero. But he created us all different. It's called control. But all them ovens got a control button on it too, right? So we got to learn to control some stuff for the good. 
<laughs> we got to learn to control stuff. So Ephesians 1 and 13. Then we mix it up. We done put it in the oven now, okay? We putting it in the oven. It's rising. It's rising. Ephesians 1 and 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He has sealed us with a promise. If we follow all the ingredients and take those ingredients and use it in our daily, daily life, and we mix our cake, and we put that cake in the oven, it's sealed. He has sealed us when you put it in the oven, and we check it with a what? Most time a toothpick or something. And it comes out clean. And the process is done. Ain't that just amazing? You had the most beautiful cake. It's just perfectly done. But God said it's the same way with us. When we take those key ingredients, dominion, fruitful, multiply, and replenish, we take those key ingredients and apply them in our lives and be servants for other people too, it all, the process comes out so clean and so pure and perfect. Now let's go to Ephesians 4 and 32. Ephesians 4 and 32. Praise God, praise God. I pray that y'all are getting something out of this. Because this is good. We cooking. We cooking today. Cooking today. <laughs> y'all didn't know y'all could be coming to a, 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 a coming to the kitchen and have a, a cooking lesson today. <laughs> and in the midst of that process too, this is just a ver you know verse God just threw in for me. He said Ephesians four and thirty two, and be ye kind one to another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. We got to love one another. We got to forgive one another. We got to do it. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. That's part of all the ingredients working in our lives. Now we're going to do James 4 and 8. James 4 and 8. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 4 and 8. It says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, and ye double-minded. Can't be double-minded. There's only how many ingredients? Four. That's not bad to follow, is it? Let me read it in another version, um, the passage. Move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you, but make sure that you cleanse your life. You know, sometimes we got to get, I think Sister Ann has said this before, naked before God. Make sure your life is cleansed. Make sure you're not harboring any unforgiveness in your heart. You know, I don't understand why people say it's so hard to forgive. Un to forgive. I mean, my husband tell me sometimes, he says, it's like as if I'm not normal with certain things. You know, you just let that just slide. And I'd be like, yeah, you know. I mean, it's, it's easy to forgive. People are going to hurt your feelings. People are going to talk about you. 
But if you know who you are, you don't have to worry about it. Don't harbor that stuff in your heart. Don't harbor it, because it's only going to hurt you. They going on with their life. We're not perfect. We're not, we're not perfect. So if it's, you know, if it's, if it's some unforgiveness in your heart, you know, just, you know, people text a lot, shoot a text. If you don't want to tell them face to face or talk to them on the phone, tell me, you know, I forgive what you did to me when I was a little girl or whatever. You know, don't, don't harbor that. Because when you go to God, he wants you to have a clean and pure heart. You know, pastor said one time a couple Sundays, he said, you know, I think it was a pastor that asked a question about being, um, pa- being, pa- being pastored to. And I was like, would I want to pastor my own self? That's a question. That's a good question, ain't it? Because I know sometimes I don't dot her eye and cross every and cross every T. I don't. None of us do. Would you want to pastor your own self? I mean, sometimes I don't want to. So can you imagine? the unforgiveness that you hold in your heart that you could easily let somebody set somebody free. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing if you just do it. You, you holding your blessings back when you don't do it. I mean, that's, that's what the word said. He said, move your heart closer and closer to me. You know, when, when, G, when, 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 G, when Jesus died on the cross for us, he didn't have an unforgiving heart. He was so pure that, you know, he, he died for us. So that's great. So at least we can do is do our part. So to sum it all up, I know a couple, I know I keep going back to what Pastor said, you know, but he was really in my message a whole lot. He was talking about David in um, 1 Samuel 16, 11, and 12. And when Samuel was looking for a king, and everybody know about David. You know, David was a really, really humble man. He's a man after God's own heart. But when he went looking for that, that great king, and he went to Jesse's house, Jesse had all of those sons. All those sons were just, they appeared to be the perfect king. But little old David was out in the field tending to what his father told him to do. Just as humble, pure. And Samuel told Jesse, don't you got some more sons? He said, oh, yeah, I got another one. He said, bring him to me. So he said, okay, let me go get him. Don't you think when all Jesse's sons was was in the house and Samuel was there, don't you think David probably knew what was going on? But he was like, God, I think I'm going to stay on out here, though. I'm just, you know, my thought. I'm going to stay on out here, God. You know, I don't want to be in the way of all of that. He thought, said, I ain't really nobody. And, you know, when you say stuff like that, you know, I ain't nobody, you ain't degrading yourself, but that's called humbleness. I ain't trying to have no title. (laughs) I ain't trying to be all up in all of this mess. I ain't trying to be out of place. But when David came in there, Samuel said, that's the one. That's the one right there. David probably didn't even want him. But he was chosen for such a time as this. And we are too. That one David with a pure heart, a loving heart, that God is looking for in each and every one of us. Are you that one, David? 
Are you that one David? Are you willing to take all the ingredients, the key ingredients, in Genesis 1 and 28 and apply them in your life that God can use you to bring thousands to him? So that's a question we need to ask. Are you in the right place? Are you set on the right temperature? Are you? It's some, it's some examinations that each and every one of us need to do. There's no big eyes and little eyes. Each and every one God created and predestined our lives for something. For something. And all of us matter. All of us matter. And it's not about yourself. It's about God's business. God's business. From the least to the greatest. It's about God's business. God's agenda. To allow him to plant his ingredients in each and every one of your hearts so you can live a kingdom life and not be governed or dictated by this world system, but by God's system. You are prosperous. You will reproduce. And you will fill this earth with God's glory. And you will take charge today and from this day forth and be what God has created and designed you to be. But you got to be shameless. You got to confess God's word. And whatever you ask, good or bad, it's going to come to pass. So watch that tongue. You got to surrender to God's voice and not your voice. And you got to get rid of pride. You got to be flawless. And you were chosen for a time like this. Each and every one of you were chosen for a time like this. Each and every one of you was chosen for a time like this. There's greatness in each and every one of you. There's greatness. You have great potentials. It's some work behind it. But you got to do it. Nobody can do it for you. So God just wants to see each and every one of you to rise to your highest potentials to be what God wants you to be. So I need each and every one of you to take all of these ingredients and apply them to your life. And we're going to have us a good old time enjoying our cake. All right? We're going to have a good old time. And each and every one of you can do it. I know sometimes... In our lives, you know, how each and everybody has been raised up different ways. Because I never thought in a million years I would be who I was today. But I thank God for the things, my life that I went through. Because I know God has greatness for me. He does. He has greatness for each and every one of you. But you've got to rise to your potentials, to the highest potentials. God is calling, he's summonsing each and every one of us to do more, do more. So get in his word, take charge, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, fill the earth. Fill the earth because you are full of glory. And just remember there is no substitutes. Every time you try to go left, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You've got to stay on the path that God has predestined and planned for you. 
So that goes back to you finding what your purpose is. Stay on the path that God has predestined and designed for you. And the Shekinah glory will come upon your life like never before. God loves each and every one of you. And I love you too. And I want to see greatness over all of y'all's life, everyone's life in this house. But you've got to follow the key ingredient. And you've got to monitor what goes into your life to make you complete. I just thank God for the word. I thank God for what he gave me for each and every one of you. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Can everybody just stand to their feet and just... And I, I sense in my spirit that there are... It might be someone or some people or whoever that you are harboring some unforgiveness in your heart. And you don't have to raise your hand if you just close your eyes and you just say, God, if I have any unforgiveness in my heart, I release it to you today. I'm leaving it here. I don't want it. Because I want to walk the path that God has for me. So, Father God, we just thank you right now that whoever is holding any unforgiveness in their heart that will stop them from having a pure heart to come to you, that they will release it right now. You said in your word, if we humble ourselves, and cast all of our cares upon you, that you got us. You take them. And God, we promise that we'll never come back and pick it up. And Father God, I also thank that you will allow me the grace and the strength to go and release that unforgiveness that's in my heart. Because, God, I don't want it anymore. I want to live for you. I want to rise to the highest potentials that you have for my life, my life. I want to go out and walk in power and authority. I want to be fruitful. I want to produce. I want to reproduce things as dead in my life, God that you might get the glory, that you might get the glory. And Father God, I just thank you, God, for the word that went forth today. And Father God, I thank you. If there's anyone that's in here that needs prayer or want to give their life to Christ, that they will come forth now. I'll say it again. If there's anyone that wants prayer today and want to give their life to Christ. They will come to the altar now. But Father God, if there is nobody, I thank you that each and every heart is clear. I thank God that the word you gave me is for the people and it's for me. I thank you that revelation and knowledge has come forth. And I give you all the praise and all the glory. And I'll forever praise your name. So, Father God, as we go out into the highways and the byways, God, you will keep us covered upon your precious blood, your precious blood. And until we see each other again, God, you'll keep us covered. And we'll forever give you all the praise and all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. And go in peace. Go in peace. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God.